Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. It's another chilly November day here in Portland, Oregon. Um, I am not out in the garden today, although I do have a video coming up later this week from my permaculture garden. Uh, today I wanna tackle a really kind of difficult subject that I've seen come up a number of times recently in permaculture groups. It is something that uh, I think is really important for us to look at and tackle if we want to have effective permaculture that is accessible for all people. And that is how do permaculture and religion interact? So let me start this video by saying that I am a white American woman who was raised Protestant and whatever my current spiritual and religious practice is, is actually not entirely relevant to this video and it's my own personal practice. But I will say that uh, it's really important that when we look at uh, permaculture and religion, we acknowledge what the majority of folks who practice permaculture were raised with either nominally, culturally, or deeply held spiritual practices rooted in Christianity in some form or another. That's just the reality because most folks who practice permaculture are uh, white and they are uh, from European, American, or Australian uh, countries. And I think that whether or not we are practicing a Christian religion, we are all culturally somewhat rooted in a uh, Christian worldview. So someone posted today in a group where I'm an admin, and I will be showing some screenshots from that group, but don't worry, everybody's identities have been obscured. Um, the post was from someone offering an Islamic permaculture course and um, wanting to tie in the practice of Islam and uh, permaculture principles. And this post was um, highly contentious. And I think that's really, really unfortunate. And I kind of want to unpack that a little bit and use that as the launching off point for discussing religion and permaculture. So Bill Mollison and David Holmgren founded Permaculture in the 1970s. And um, I think it's really easy for folks to think of permaculture as a science uh, much akin to botany or biology or ecology when it actually is not. Permaculture is a design system where we mimic uh, functional aspects of nature and use them to create a, a society that is resilient for all people and create um, ways of humans interacting with the environment and producing our food and habitation that uh, does not deplete the environment and actually strives to regenerate and fix the problems that humanity has inflicted upon nature in the past. So permaculture is not a science. It has lots of spiritual and religious overtones to it, even though I believe Bill Mollison was probably an atheist. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe I remember reading that somewhere. ask, how does permaculture have religious overtones? Well, permaculture has three ethics, and I think it's important when we look at religions, they're founded on morals and ethics, and generally a code of behavior. What is acceptable, what is not, uh, what is seen as righteous or um, worthy practice, what is seen as kind or compassionate. And uh, if you look at permaculture, it has a code of 12 principles to follow for design. So there's a lot of modeling and um, kind of using a f religious framework from the very beginning of permaculture, even though it is not inherently religious itself. There is a lot in permaculture of um, reverence and honor for the systems in nature. That's not necessarily worshipfulness, and I'm not saying that um, permaculture is sort of a, you know, animistic or uh, earth mother worshiping kind of religion. It's not, again, it's a design system. But there is inherently that uh, connotation and tie in of a spiritual and religious feeling to permaculture. In fact, so many folks are drawn to permaculture because it feels like it fills a spiritual void. 
it's not just a way of gardening. It is a way of designing your whole life and your whole community to be in harmony with nature, to be um, respectful and uplifting of other people in your community and of nature. And that all, whether you like it or not, carries a profoundly religious uh, overtone and undertone to it. So while folks may claim that permaculture is a science, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. There are deeply artistic elements to it. There's so much emphasis on um, looking at patterns and beauty and art in nature and using that in art design. There is a lot of emphasis on aesthetics. There is a lot of emphasis on the creativity of permaculture. That's not science. Now you can obviously argue that science and art are commingled in many, many ways. And I totally would agree with that. But there's also this spiritual element. Again, three ethics, 12 principles, all have kind of a spiritual overtone. So the other issue is that I think a lot of folks come to permaculture because they have a really profound desire and longing to want to right the wrongs of humans in the past, to correct the injustices and the exploitation of the past, to heal the planet, to find solutions for world hunger, to help all people live in harmony with each other and with nature. That desire to want to right wrongs, to want to have compassion for the planet and wild spaces and for people, that desire to want to create a harmonious way of living has a spiritual dynamic to it. Now, of course, I'm not saying that you can't come to permaculture if you are a secular humanist or an atheist or what have you, but I do want to help us understand that there is that framework of spirituality kind of underpinning all of the elements of permaculture, whether Mollison intended it or not. Now, if we look at permaculture design courses, permaculture retreats and workshops that exist, many of them have a focus on yoga, mindfulness, meditation, other Buddhist practices. There are lots of permaculture activities and events and celebrations that include kind of Wiccan or Druidic or paganistic practices. There are obviously uh, permaculture design courses that are based around a religious practice. There are ones that are offered on kibbutz in Israel. There are ones that are offered around uh, various indigenous religious practice, spiritual practice. But the majority of permaculture design certificates that are offered are either gonna be secular humanist or they are going to be Christian based. And I think that that is really important for us to acknowledge that those are kind of the two dominant uh, lenses through which people view permaculture or what they bring to the table with their permaculture activities. If we look at Paul Gauchi, whose Back to Eden movement was huge in permaculture around 2010, 2011, I wanna say, uh, he is a fundamentalist or evangelical Christian that has very conservative and very kind of fringe uh, Christian notions. Um, that is his whole spiel with you need to cover the earth um, with wood chips basically and a deep mulch is based out of his spiritual practice, not based out of science, not based actually out of permaculture design, but based out of observation of his religious and biblical practice that women need to cover their heads and that men are a covering over women and, and things like that. So I think it's also important to realize that if we're looking at permaculture practitioners and people that are promoting certain methods, they're often based out of their own religious worldview and not necessarily out of science and not even necessarily out of permaculture itself. I know Joel Salatin, who's very, very popular in a lot of regenerative agriculture and permaculture circles and whom I've heard speak multiple times, is a evangelical Christian. A lot of um, mainstream kind of American uh, spokespeople for permaculture and for sustainable agriculture come from a practice of Christianity. That is the dominant narrative. 
Now, I know we can look at folks like Jeff Lawton in Australia, who is married to a Muslim woman, Nadia Lawton, and I believe he is practicing Islam at this time, um, either nominally or has some elements of it streaming through his permaculture messages. But the majority of the uh, worldview and dynamic that is shared is Christian-based or secular humanist-based. So back to this post that came up in this permaculture group where I admin. Uh, it is a post for an Islam uh, interwoven permaculture workshop. So let's just put it this way. I had to delete more than a dozen comments and ban multiple people from the group after some really gross Islamophobic um, and hateful comments that were put out there. But there were a number of comments that said there is no place for religion in permaculture. And again, as I've just laid out, there are tons of spiritual and religious interweavings of permaculture um, throughout its entire run thus far. I think that it's really important that we make the distinction that if you don't want religion in your permaculture, you don't have to have it. But that doesn't mean it isn't meaningful to somebody else. That doesn't mean that um, permaculture is inherently anti-religion. It doesn't mean that permaculture is inherently atheistic. In fact, if we talk about permaculture as being accessible design to create a sustainable way of living for all people, we're going to have to be open and accepting to religious practice being commingled with our permaculture. The majority of the world views their life through the lens of their religious and spiritual practice. And we can't ask them to divorce the foundational underpinnings of the way they live their life from their permaculture practice. That's just not fair and it's not even remotely possible. I think there's a really big difference here between saying, I don't want someone to superimpose their religion onto my permaculture, which again, as I mentioned earlier, lots of um, permaculture folks are uh, subsuming their permaculture and the way they teach it to you with their Christian worldview, whether you like it or not. I think it's really important that we have a right to say, I don't want your religion to influence my permaculture and I can do my permaculture without your religious practice. On the other hand, it's really important to also say permaculture is accessible to everybody from all religions and that if people want to take their religion and find the meaningful texts in their religion and find the tenets of their religion that pair up and match up with permaculture principles and sustainable living, then we need to encourage that. We want to make sure that folks know there are no parts of permaculture design that I have found anyway, um, if you can correct me if you found some, there are no parts of permaculture design that interfere with anybody's religious practice. In fact, I see permaculture as a way to um, help folks understand their religion and their relationship to other human beings and to the world in which we live, because that's what religion helps people do. It's also what permaculture helps people do. But I think it's also important to remember that folks are going to be accessing permaculture through the worldview of the religion um, that they are either brought up in culturally and kind of nominally practice or that they practice in, in a profound and important way in their lives. So if folks can come to permaculture by understanding uh, the 12 principles of permaculture through their religious text and practice, I think that's awesome. If folks are able to integrate, right, permaculture principle, integrate, don't segregate. If they're able to integrate their religious practice with their permaculture design and find those things can mesh together and live harmoniously in their, um, you know, in their mind and in their heart and in their practice, I think that is fantastic. So permaculture cannot be inherently antagonistic to religion. It also cannot in any way dictate religion. And I think if we hold those two things up and say, we need to remember those at all times, we can find that permaculture really is people care and really is accessible to everybody, whether they have no religious practice, whether they have a nominal religious practice, or whether they are um, deeply spiritual and religious. 
as long as we make sure that we are not superimposing our religion through our permaculture, and as long as we make sure that we are not using permaculture as a way to exclude people who have religious practice, think that we're doing permaculture correctly. Permaculture should not have gatekeeping. It should not in any way bar people who have a deeply held religious practice from participating because we need all people to do permaculture and permaculture has value. It brings diversity, it brings resilience, it brings improved quality of life for all people and people who have religious practice have a right and a benefit of accessing permaculture, just like folks who don't or folks who practice a dominant religion. So I would just encourage you, if you're looking at permaculture and feeling like there's no room for spirituality and religion in it, or that um, folks don't have a right to tie their religious practice to their permaculture or to integrate those two elements, I'd ask you just to sit and think about why that makes you uncomfortable and why you wanna push back against that right away. Because I think it's really important that we allow all of those things to marry in a way that doesn't oppress people, in a way that doesn't impinge upon people's uh, rights and in a way that is open and accepting so that we all can practice permaculture with site-specific design that includes community-specific design. It includes worldview-specific, religion-specific design. So while you and your culture and your needs of your site and of your person don't require religion for your permaculture, that may not be true in another community. I think it's really important that we acknowledge we're all diverse people with diverse practices and not let that be a way that we gate keep people from accessing permaculture. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. I do wanna acknowledge really quickly at the end of this video, because it is a topic I'm thinking about covering more in depth later, that um, permaculture borrows heavily from traditional indigenous practices, both spiritual and practical agricultural practices and lifestyle practices. And I think it's really important that when we look at the formation of permaculture, we acknowledge the way that it has taken from indigenous practice and repackaged it um, by a couple of white dudes in a way that is palatable to a white Christian audience. And so that is a topic for another video. I'm really interested in talking about colonialism and permaculture, even though I get really nasty messages in my inbox uh, every time I bring it up. But I I really want to talk about that later. I don't want to fail to acknowledge that that ties in here in this video, but I want to give it its own separate space. So I hope to do that soon. Um, yeah. If you enjoyed this video or you got something out of it, I'd encourage you to check out my Patreon down in the description. If you're not able to support this channel on Patreon on a regular basis, I have a PayPal and you can throw a couple of bucks at me. That helps me continue to make content. I'll be back really soon from my permaculture garden. Thanks.